Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is a quick care collab for Dendrobium tortilli, um, which I think is how it's pronounced. Uh, um, now, I got this from Alberto in Italy when he had to give up his collection. Um, now, often when somebody gives their orchids up, it's sad. But in this case, it was absolutely superb. Quite a few went to sort of um, YouTube friends. Um, I think Rachel had some, I definitely had some. And um, some went to the local botanical gardens. But he was off to the UK to work with the orchids at Kew Gardens. And that's a reasonable excuse to give up your collection. <laughs> it's about the best one you could ever get, I should think. It's, you know, absolutely marvellous job to get. Um, when you're an orchid enthusiastic enthusiast anyway and obviously he gets to work around the whole of Kew Gardens not just with the orchids so he gets to help out in all the different areas so it must be an incredibly interesting job and occasionally hard work I suspect especially if you get involved with the um, the rather extensive flower beds that have to be planted up and and then cleared out and planted up again at various times of the year I don't think he gets on the lawnmower and cuts the grass though. Um, anyway, so this arrived as a plant with a couple of kikis and the plant started to rot. It went downhill so I took the two kikis off and mounted those up separately. So that's what I've actually got. I've got two plants on this mount, not one. And one is stronger than the other. Um, let me just bring it round here. Um, so one plant is doing better than the other one. That's the way I'm going to put it. And the reason that I can tell that is the plant on the right, that's this one and this cane, both are nice big fat canes, roughly the same size. Yeah. So this is last year's growth. This is the year before, which it's currently in bloom on, and this is its first blooming. Now the other one has a shorter last year's growth and a much shorter previous year's growth. Now that put out a spike, but it failed. It's just not strong enough. <clears throat> and what's happening now is the one on the right, the stronger one, is pushing out its new growth and is currently with a single bloom. I think in subsequent years we might get spikes with more than one bloom, but that I'm not sure about. Whereas the not so strong one, the new growth is just starting. Now, nearly all of my dendrobiums that grow this way are late starting this year. And I'm gonna put it down to the change in environment because I can see no other good reason. Now, in my previous grow room when the sun hit the glass the temperature went up so daytime temperatures from sort of mid-march onwards with the sun out could be quite good now here i had no sun in the spring it's only now it's coming in through the roof this late in the year so these went through their spring which is normally increase in um, daytime temperatures is a trigger along with longer days. This is a trigger for things to start happening. <clears throat> in some cases it's growth, in some cases it's blooming, in some cases it's both. Um, that's plant dependent. Um, well I didn't get that this year. I've got the light and the longer days but I didn't get the daytime temperature increase to signify spring. It didn't happen. Now I could have spent a fortune using the heater to raise the daytime temperatures but my heaters for my minimum night temperature not for daytime. I can't afford the luxury of heating this place during the day. Um, it has to put up with the minimum setting for the night and if during the day it's so cold it drops down to that the heater will kick in during the day but that's only to keep that minimum temperature right so what's going to happen with this one now hopefully we're going to grow two nice strong new canes this year now i don't know how big they're going to get but i would hope they'll be at least this big which is the larger of the two from last year and then what we will have next spring is blooms on this and this, which are much stronger canes than these two. So I think we should get a reasonable blooming on those canes next year, not this year. So what have we got then? Tortilli. 
is an element of twisted, tortured in that name. I'm not going to look it up. I'm not doing Latin. <laughs> Don't meet a lot of lats in the UK. Um, but you can see the twisting you know, nature of the petals and sepals. They do have a twisted, tortured look to them. Um, if it wasn't for that, this would look incredibly like primulinum or even a film. Very, very similar colours, um, but this is the, what makes it unique. It's these twists on here. Um, so, attractive bloom, nice patterning in the lip, and a first time bloomer for me. I grow this exactly the same as many other of my dendrobiums. It needs a drier, cooler winter rest without being dramatic. It's not one of these that needs to go down to five degrees or anything stupid. Um, it just needs to be cooler in the winter than it was in the growing season. It also needs brighter light in the winter, brighter than it was in the growing season. And if you can't do bright light in the winter, then provide quite heavy shade during the growing season because it's the it's the change it's the difference that's important not specifically the actual light levels so what you're looking to do is fool it by keeping it relatively shady um, in the growing season if it was from an evergreen forest it would have that shade permanently but more likely if it was from a deciduous forest then it's going to be shaded in the summer and then the leaves fall off the trees and it's brighter in the winter. That's what you're trying to achieve. So you can fool it. Keep it quite heavily shaded in the summer if you can't achieve it. There was somebody in a comment this morning I was dealing with that said they'd had a, I forget what it was, a primulinum possibly, that they'd had for eight years and still yet to get it to bloom. Well, everybody thinks it's the winter treatment yeah but it's it's the difference in the winter compared with the growing season that's what you've got to achieve so if you can't get the winter season exactly right then fool the plant into believing it's right by changing the growing season element keep it shadier and you know and keep it as warm as you can in those growing season in the growing season then as you go into winter you will be able to increase the light and you will be able to cool it down because <laughs> that, that's the goal you know and then virtually no water not none not not much and no feed during the winter and i didn't give this any special treatment other than that's what i do for my for these type of dendrobium so i didn't even look this up to find out if it needed a different treatment it just got what the others got and we got it to bloom so there we go so that's it i'm not going to do where it comes from and all that sort of stuff um <laughs> sometimes it helps when you're actually working out how to look after something to find out where it comes from but the country is often irrelevant it's basically the environment the type of forest if it is you know if it is a forest dweller and also how high up which will give you your temperature range. Those are the two important bits. And then your rainfall pattern. You know, and is it most places where our tropical orchids come from, they have a wet season, which we call the growing season. We call it summer in the UK. And um, then they have a drier, cooler period. Yeah, um, and that is what we would call winter. But that's their resting time to a degree most in deciduous forests would call that a rest so there we go that's my stint um so we have another look at the bloom i'll see if i can get this to focus close in um, but i'm filming early in the day today i've got a lot to do so there we go an attractive bloom with twisted or distorted or tortured petals and sepals i'm sure somebody will look that up and tell me i'm not fussed either way that's uh, that's just my take on it Right, see you next time. Thanks for dropping by.